Working with any type of rotary, we're going to recommend that you lower your Z table as far as it'll go. And by doing that, you'll ensure that it is at its maximum depth and you'll definitely limit uh, the possibility for any type of head crash. So what I'll do first is I'll lower the bed until I get my hard limit protection. And then once I hit that limit, I'll hit escape. So now I can move the bed around. The next thing to do when working with a chuck rotary is we want to make sure that we set it into our laser with the motor facing to the right side. Uh, the cable is only so long, so it's going to be very difficult to put it into the machine any other way. We will plug it in, center it, and typically what I would do would be center it by using my red laser, my alignment, and just double check that it matches with the rail. Run it along, make sure it matches with the middle of the back and also the middle of the front. And once I know that I am straight, it's time to move forward. One of the best tools they ha have around when you're working with a chuck rotary, because it's so dependent on the diameter or the circumference of your, your pieces, is going to be a tailor tape or a flexible tape like this. To ensure that we have proper rotation on the chuck rotary, we need to know the size of our materials or our tumblers, glasses, and what have you. Uh, making sure that the rotation is correct I typically will measure the circumference of the chuck and I can measure my steps per rotation. We've already done that for you. Uh, we are confident that 12,000 steps per rotation for this chuck rotary is the correct number. So since the chuck rotary is really 100% dependent upon the accuracy of your measurement, uh, it's really a good idea to do a test run on at least one of the pieces so that you can dial in your settings. So I'm going to put this 30 ounce tumbler on using the key. Now let's move this out of the way. And then we're expanding and contracting these, uh, the chucks of the rotary to hold on and grasp, grab on to our product. And Typically with this, we just want to make sure it's, we don't want to over tighten it. If you're working with glass, you could easily crack it. Um, but we just want to make sure it is secure and straight. And then we would slide our end piece here to hold it in and put a little bit of pressure on, locking the clamp down, making sure that it's secure. We can use our menu button and you move to make sure that it is spinning okay. As you can tell, it is a little wobbly, so we'll have to do some minor adjustments to make sure it's straight. We don't want the laser to be going in and out of focus while we're doing our engraving. And that's much better. Once you have your product in there, it's safe to say that you can move the bed up and get it close, close enough to the point that you're comfortable. And then we're going to use our focus tool to make sure that we are within our limits of being focused onto the material. Now what I like to do when I'm first measuring these I like to make a little mark so that I can follow that around and make sure that I am truly getting the, the correct rotation or the correct uh, object diameter and circumference. I will measure my piece. And this is approximately 12 and a half inches in circumference. So we're gonna base our graphic off of this. Setting up the chuck rotary in Lightburn is fairly simple. Uh, since we do know 
the steps per rotation. So if we go up to Laser Tools and we go into Rotary Setup, we're going to want to first click on Read Settings. We need to have a confirmation that settings re read from controller are successful. Uh, this is important because when we are changing these settings, they need to be written to the controller. And if they are not, then you are going to be left with whatever settings are in the controller, likely 360 degrees or 360 steps per rotation, which would be a full circle uh, if the gearing was one to one. So we want to make sure that we are set to Chuck Rotary. Our rotary is enabled. We are using the A axis and the steps for this particular Chuck Rotary are 12,000 steps per rotation. Now the object diameter, which we measured earlier for our cup, was, um, well, the circumference was 12.5. And uh, either of these measurements will work just fine. As you can see, as I change the circumference, it also changed the object diameter. You can click OK, and this will save and send it to the laser, granted that you are connected. Now, what I typically would do, at least for my first tumbler and my test, is run a test pattern. And I want to make sure that my circumference is correct and my steps per rotation are correct. So I would build a graphic similar to this box in the size of the actual circumference of the piece. So 12.5 is a circumference. Um, I'm not going to use this test pattern, so I'm just going to make this whole thing black. I will get rid of this test, move that over here, select this, and I am using a particular origin. Um, you can use any of the end origins, so bottom or top, but you want to start there so that you can see a full rotation and then come back and another full rotation. So if you have your laser head set over a piece of tape like we're going to do on the laser machine now, and you have a mark, then your object should spin a full 360 degrees, hit that mark, and then spin all the way back 360 degrees and hit the mark again where it started. So I'm picking the middle bottom, and this way it'll rotate, spin, hit that mark, come back, and we should be good. Let me send this over to the laser, and now we'll move over there and check out what's going to happen. As you can see, I have this cup taped off with a mark indicating my start point. And my main goal of this is just to do a frame to make sure that we're starting in one position, doing a full, hundred, uh, full 360 degree rotation, hitting that mark again, and then coming back and ending where that mark is. So I sent over that file with the rectangle that is what, approximately 12.5 inches, which is the exact uh, circumference of this tumbler. I will hit frame. And we stopped, crossed the line, should cross the line again. And that is one of the easiest ways that you're going to be able to verify your steps per rotation and your circumference or diameter of your piece. Now that we verified that our steps per rotation and also our object circumference or diameter is correct, we can go ahead and send our graphic over or our test graphic if we wanted to run uh, a test on some tape. Uh, what I have here is just the word test, and I now have switched my origin to center. Uh, working on tumblers, it's typically easiest to try to align it in the center of the cup, um, depending on how you're lining things up. Otherwise, you would be using the center right or center left, uh, depending on the job and how you're, you're doing it. But I find it easier to find the middle of the, the tumbler 
or object I'm working on that is rotating and picking the center. So we'll, ha we'll go ahead and send this over and we'll go meet at the laser again. So for this part of the testing, I have now put my red dot in the center of my tape. Um, I'm going to hit the frame button and verify that my graphic is sent over. And it's just a small test graphic with hardly any power. Uh, should be enough to at least give us an indication on the tape that everything is functioning correctly. And one of the very last things to do to make sure that everything is working properly is to measure the actual graphic that you sent over. Mine was about two and a half inches, uh, just over two and a half inches, and that is exactly what I have. So this is how you use the Chuck Rotary on the Thunder Laser uh, Nova series and Odin series. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, you know how to reach us, support at thunderlaserusa.com.